and my wife and I did was my second year in real estate. I found a seller that had a a lot they wanted to sell, and it was a subdividable lot. And you know, we were able to get four homes out of it, but uh, it was it was you know two million to buy another three million, I think, in, in construction. And you know, it was a great deal. At the end of it, it had over a million dollars of profit. Financial freedom, that is usually the dream, especially for people in financial difficulty or mediocre situations. But how do we really get there? How do we really get financial freedom? I mean, with all the how to be rich tips coming from already rich or extremely lucky people, what is the real deal in getting financial freedom? Well, I can tell you what it is. It's real estate. And specifically in real estate, it's private money. Private money is the answer when it comes to real estate investing. It puts you in the driver's seat in control of your business. Well, my guest today on raising private money, he's raised over $15 million in private money for his real estate deals. And he's going to tell you exactly how he's done it. He's done over 300 transactions just on single family houses. And he bought his very first house when he was only 23 years old. Well, my guest is Dan Lesniak, and he is a serial real estate investor, and he knows how to raise private money. So if you want private money for your real estate deals, don't miss a second of this episode. Let's if you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Well, my guest today on Raising Private Money, he's not only a real estate investor like you and me, this guy is a serial real estate investor. He bought his first house when he was only 23 years old. Since that time, he's invested in, he's developed over 300 homes. And how did he do it? Well, this is the Raising Private Money show. So why is my guest here? We're talking large in part about private money. He has raised over $15 million from uh, real estate uh, private lenders, investors, for his own real estate projects. He's helped over a hundred investors create passive income. That's the beautiful thing about private money. Just sit back and, you know, let your interest accrue safely and securely or collect checks. Well, my guest career in real estate actually goes all the way back to 2011. Um, he got his real estate license. He started part-time in real estate as a real, uh, real estate agent or realtor. And uh, he developed his own strategy, which is called hyper local strategy, working hyper fast. And then just a full, uh, just a few first full time or a few months he was in it, he went full time. So he became the top agent in his office at Century 21, so $22 million in real estate his first year. And then what he experienced, his success later became known as his best-selling book, The Hyper-Local, Hyper-Fast Real Estate Agent. So um, met his wife in the business. Her name is Carrie. So Dan and Carrie, they started their coaching and training company called Hyper-Fast Agent. And he's been on stages with the big names like Grant Cardone, et cetera. One thing I love about uh, my guest is he gives back. He and his wife, Carrie, by the way, they're uh, parents of four children. Anyway, they've got uh, three big charities that they are very actively involved in. And so uh, he knows how to give back and he's got a servant's heart. With that. Hello, Dan, and welcome to the show. Welcome, Jay. I love, I love that intro, that music and, and everything. That was, that was awesome. <laughs> You got it, man. Well, it's easy to do a great introduction when you got a great guest such as yourself. And 
it's just amazing the accomplishments that you have achieved in such a short period of time in, in uh, your career. You've raised over $15 million in private money. This is Raising Private Money podcast. So let's talk about that first, and then we'll come back around to hyper fast and, and all that hyper kind of stuff that you do. <laughs> but um, so what was your real estate investing business like prior to private money? And then how did private money change your real estate investing business? Yeah. So before we did it, we were just constrained. So our first big deal that we did that my wife and I did was my second year in real estate. I found a seller that had a, a lot they wanted to sell and it was a subdividable lot. And, you know, we were able to get four homes out of it, but uh, it was, it was, you know, 2 million to buy another 3 million, I think in, in construction and, you know, it was a great deal at the end of it. It had over a million dollars of profit, but it took, you know, almost a million dollars total between us and the, the builder that we partnered with to do the deal. We, you know, we were able to get the rest from a bank, but I, I realized, you know, at, at most we're only going to be able to do like one or, or maybe eventually two deals like this at a time, unless we get more revenue or excuse me, more capital, and the, the, which is how do we get more revenue? Uh, and at, at the time, I was kind of coming to this realization. I had some past real estate clients reach out to me, and they were interested in buying an investment property and kind of doing it themselves. And you know, we looked at the numbers, and this is all in the Washington, D.C. market. And you know, I kind of realized that as, as you know, full-time, uh, this was a, a, a doctor. He was a full-time doctor. Like, it's really not gonna have time to do this. And so by the time he paid managers and everyone else, um, you know, he wasn't going to make a lot of money. And, and that's when I kind of proposed him like, why don't, why don't you just let me invest uh, or why don't you just invest with me on my next deal and I'm going to deliver you a better return. You're not gonna have to worry about, you know, going out, finding the deal, executing it, all that kind of stuff. And that was that was kind of like how we did our, our first one, like him and a, a couple of his buddies got in on it. And, uh, you know, then I realized we're, we're able to do a lot more and provide value to other people. They can get income and, and not have the liability, not have the time and, you know, not, not have to worry about it and they can get involved in bigger projects. So it was you know, a kind of a win-win for everyone. And, and so it just kind of started out of necessity and, and as a, a way to solve a problem for a client and myself. Yeah, this world of private money creates so many win-win scenarios. I like to call it the cash is happy on both sides of the table. And your story I can relate to so well. Um, you know, my first six years investing in real estate in Eastern North Carolina, um, from 2003 to 2009, I relied on the local banks. And even before I lost my line of credit there, <laughs> Um, I, I was, my hands were tied. I only had a million dollar line of credit. And even though houses at that time were pretty cheap in East North Carolina, I mean, you know, when you're out of funds, you're out of funds. So it sounds to me like, um, you experienced what I did. And that is the, um, the mother of invention is necessity. I, I mean, I had to do it given my situation. Um, so how would you describe getting into private money uh, actually came about? I mean, you know, you got this deal. So it sounds like you had a doctor that it, you had done some business with and he wanted to invest in real estate. So you proposed to him, well, why don't you just be passive and let me handle everything and I'll give you a high rate of return. Uh, how did this idea even come to your mind? It was it was really just looking at the numbers of what he would make on, you know, going out and buying one unit and having a rental and, you know, knowing the time and hassle he'd have to put into managing it or, or hiring a manager, which would then, you know, bleed out his profits. So, you know, I realized that he was going to make a lot less money on any deal that I could find him compared to like a deal that that we found and did and 
operated. So, you know, it, it, it seemed like I was able to offer him a better solution and, you know, it would, it would take away some of my profit compared to using my own cash in the deal, but it would allow me to go out and do instead of one or two at a time, I could go out and potentially do, you know, an unlimited amount uh, well, at the same time. That's the key term right there. In this world of private money, there's no limit to the number of private lenders that uh, we can have. Um, I've got 44 right now that are investing in our deals. And, you know, people sometimes say, well, say, Jay, why would you want to borrow private money? And, you know, I pay them 8% interest. Um, they said, well, why do you want to borrow private money? Why don't you just use your own money, save the interest? Since you're making all that money, Jay, why do you want to keep borrowing private money? The answer is real easy. When I'm involved in 20 different projects, I don't want my cash uh, tied up in 20 different projects. So we create these win-win scenarios, as you said. Uh, we protect our private lenders, giving them a um, on our single family houses, deed of trust, promissory note, put them on the insurance policy. Everything is closed with a real estate attorney. Uh, we use all professionals, you know, in the closing process. So you had that doctor. So now he was your first private lender. So how did you grow your private lender base? Where did you find more private lenders and what's your favorite strategies on raising private money? So we, we, we just grew it from our, our client base. We had a lot of real estate clients, our team had said sold a lot of homes in the Washington DC, Northern Virginia area still does. And, you know, we were one of the biggest teams up there. So we, we had, uh, you know, a database of a lot of clients who had, have done business with us. So, you know, we, we really just, expanded it uh, from friends and family to past clients. So, you know, we just reach out to our list. We've got about 110 active investors now with us that have, uh, you know, done money on different projects. So, you know, it, it just started with uh, friends and family and our client base, our existing clients, people that already knew, liked, and trusted us, had done business with us in real estate in some shape or form. So we just, we started there and, uh, you know, called those people, sent emails to them and, and, and we just grew it from there. So it was people yeah, that already, um, that already knew us. When you were, when you were uh, raising private money, um, were you raising private money for specific deals or were you like teaching a program, private lending program opportunity, they tell you how much they got to invest. And then you say, okay, I'll try to put your work or I will put your money to work for you just as soon as possible. Um, which way do you do it? Or have you done it both ways? A little of both, but primarily through acquiring a good project or getting under control and then bringing that project to people that we think would be interested in investing in it. So that's been the primary primary way that we've done it we've also done some investor meetup groups uh in in arlington virginia and that group prior to covid we were meeting monthly during covid we went to zoom now we're back to quarterly so we've you know we've we've done that approach too where we're bringing investors real estate agents lenders all in the same room we're providing a opportunity for them to network uh, we bring in a different speaker and we teach a subject and, you know, some of those people just by being in that room with us, wanting to get their feet wet in investing, but maybe not wanting to jump in and do their own deal right away. Some of them have you know invested with us and, and done deals with us as well. So, so both ways have, have worked for us, but primarily we're, we're finding a deal that we really like and then taking it to people that we know would be interested in it. Yeah, Dan, we uh, we may have a listener tuning in here to, to the show thinking to themselves, well, you know, Dan's been investing a long time. He's a great communicator. Uh, he's confident. Um, and I've never raised private money. I, you know, I never talked to anybody. Um, you know, how do I start? How do, how do I start, you know, actually attracting private money for my real estate deals. And just to make sure we're on the same page, of course, Dan and I are on the same page. I want to make sure you, the listener, is on the same page with us. We're talking about doing business with individuals, right? This is not institutional money. 
This is not hard money, even though I've got a lot of great friends that are hard money lenders. Um, this is doing business with individuals. A lot of people call it relationship money and et cetera. But Dan, what would you say to someone that's like sort of doubting that they could do this? I mean, can anybody raise private money? Yeah, I think anyone can do it. I think uh, go out and get education first, right? Like listen to podcasts like this one, read books, go to meetup groups, get get really good at at being a real estate practitioner, right? Learn learn the trade learn learn how to identify a good deal learn how to generate good leads so you know so so put the work in and you know maybe on your first deal you you know you you, you bring the person in as a partner like you find the deal right you you bring in someone else and use their capital use their experience maybe that's how you get started you know maybe it's partnering with friends and family you know maybe it's a mix of your own money and their money. Like there, there's a whole bunch of different ways, but just get the education, put in the work and, and start, start small. I think, I think anyone can do it, right? Like there is a point, you know, not, not more than seven, eight years ago where I have never raised a penny <laughs> and now I have, right. Uh, there, I'm, I'm sure there's some time period, right. Where, where Jay, you had never raised money and then you went out, and did it for the first time and then it worked and you did it again and again and again. So we've all, we've all done things in our lives that we've never done before, right? Like we're not, we're not born uh, knowing how to walk, right? But then, and, and the first time we try, we fall down, but eventually we get it, right? No one tells a two-year-old like, why are you falling down? You're never going to walk, right? Like they, they figure it out. So I think this is like any skill in life. Anyone can go out and do this. Yeah, you're right, Dan. I mean, you know, one of my mantras I say all the time, and that is the successful be learn how to become comfortable being uncomfortable. Anytime we do anything new, um, you know, it's uncomfortable because we've never done it before. So you mentioned a moment ago, Dan, first, get your education and learn what this is all about. Well, Dan, let's give our uh, listener here something for free. I'm so excited. I just finished writing my brand new private money guide, which is called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Investing Business and Help You Build Incredible Wealth. Well, you can download it for free at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. I'm an E-R, not an O-R. That's J Connor, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. And um, again, that's a, a very nice, great way to start into private money and get you on the way there quickly. Then, as you and I were speaking a moment ago, one of the first places for someone to raise private money and really um, thank you for the comment there. Uh, day trading stock options says I learned a lot from your money guide. Waves of profit. That's pretty cool. Anyway, you know, you want to know, you want to know your program. You see, in this world of private money, there's no application process. I'm not applying for a line of credit. I'm not applying for a loan. I mean, you know, Dan, as you know, the traditional way people borrow money, real estate investors, is you go to the banker, you get on your hands and knees. You put your hands underneath your chin and you say, please, please loan me money for my deal. Please give me a mortgage. But in the way we do it, there's no begging, chasing or selling. We are actually offering someone a mortgage, offering them the opportunity. So, you know, when I got it straight in my mind years ago that I'm not chasing or begging, there's no fear of rejection. I've never asked anybody for money. The reason I've never asked them for money is I always raise the money ahead of time. And then I actually bring the deal to them and say, great news. I can now put your money to work for you. Of course, Dan, you've probably done quite a bit of syndication where you raise a, a money in a fund for a project you're going to develop. In my case, everything I've done is single family houses, which we call one offs. You got a house being funded by a private lender individual could be two being secured by the same house. 
But um, Dan, I appreciate you sharing all your experience there, or some of your experience there on raising private money. Now, let's talk, uh, let's move on to the current market. The current market is um, a strange thing going on right now. It is. <laughs> um, in fact, um, I'm 62 years old. I've never seen anything like it. It's like you got a vortex of all these different um, dichotomies or these variables that are coming into the real estate market that really makes it a challenge for anybody to really have a crystal ball. But Dan, let's pretend you have a crystal ball. Mm. What do you see? What do you see is uh, happening in this real estate market? What are the biggest challenges now? And how should people pre uh, prepare themselves to take advantage of some, maybe some opportunities that are coming along in the next year? Yeah, I think it, it is uh, a challenging to really figure out what is going on. We, of course, 2020, 2021 were huge years in terms of price increases, number of transactions happening, uh, you know, no inventory. And now we, we kind of went from that to interest rates going from three to six, seven percent. Well, you know, kind of looks like they're stabilizing in the high sixes for now, uh, mid sixes maybe. And everything just kind of paused. It wasn't, it wasn't, like the price, it wasn't like 08 though or 09 where you know it was like a 20% drop in prices. Like we haven't seen that, so uh, we've, we've just seen less transactions and buyers kind of pausing. And if you think about it, you know, the move up buyer now they don't want to sell their existing home that has a 3% interest rate and move to the next one, so that takes a buyer out of the market, but it also takes a seller out of the market, so uh, it's it's just kind of challenging to figure out exactly where it's going to go. Like rents are up. You know, I, I definitely think the, um, the decreased volume makes it difficult for real estate agents and for flippers. So, you know, I think you should have a, you should have pathways to hold your deals if you need to. Um, Cause you know, there are a lot of, a lot of things just aren't moving as quickly, but, but also sellers aren't dropping prices yet drastically in, in most markets. So it's, it's kind of like a weird time. And, you know, overall you're seeing, and if you look at the rest of the economy, you're seeing all these big companies like Amazon and Facebook are laying off thousands of workers, but then yet there's small businesses that can't hire people. If you're, if you're looking for work on your house, it's hard to get contractors. So it's kind of, it's kind of, it's just confusing. You know, I, I, uh, it, it's good to hear uh, that at 62 years old, you're you're perplexed by the situation too. So I guess my my advice to real estate agents would be to kind of have multiple strategies. Don't don't just bank on one strategy to make a deal succeed and be more conservative than you were before in how you evaluate deals on your deal criteria. Yeah, the biggest opportunity, Dan, that I see, um, at least, at least over the next year, are the foreclosures that have been under moratorium because of COVID, and now all that's lifted. Um, we've got two categories of four people in foreclosure. We got all the people that were in like regular foreclosure leading up to <laughs> COVID that started in March 2020. And then you got all these people that lost their jobs because of COVID. And so they would have ordinarily gone into foreclosure, but since there was a moratorium on foreclosures, um, all that has been held up. Well, as of two months ago, year to date, Foreclosures are up. Foreclosure starts are up 219% year to date over last year, same period of time. Prior to COVID, 25% of mine and Carol Joy's business since 2004 has been about 25% of our deals. We track every foreclosure that's filed against up until the point of sale. And then, you know, we communicate with them three different ways. And so we buy the majority of these foreclosures directly from the owners instead of 
waiting for the sale or waiting for it to be a bank owned property. Well, prior to COVID, 25% of the, of the business was came from that, our foreclosure system. But uh, this year, we're tracking at least 50% of our deals are going to be coming from people facing foreclosure. And it's all about serving them, helping them out of financial distress, giving them money. I mean, my lands, my average profit is $78,000 per deal right now on a single family house. And if I can't give somebody $3,000 or $5,000 to help them get back on their feet and keep a foreclosure off of the record, I'll do that all day long. But as far as opportunities go, I think that's where the majority of the sellers are going to be. Uh, or the, where the properties are purchased from, for the reasons you just said, there's no inventory. Somebody wants to sell their house. Well, if they got a mortgage, they don't want to go from two and a half or three percent to six percent to buy another one. And where are you going to buy if there ain't nothing in the in the multiple listing service? So you know, how do you fix that? Well, you get your private money lined up first. You target foreclosures. And as you said, Dan, have multiple exit strategies. I mean, when you get a deal in the contract, I mean, you know, you don't have to stay in the deal, right? I stay in the majority of mine, but you can wholesale it. Uh, you can sell it on rent to own. Uh, you can sell it on work for equity. Of course, on them foreclosures, I buy most of them subject to the existing note. And then I'll use private money to bring the payments current. But um, that's what I see. For that. So do, do you agree? with uh with what i'm seeing there dan yeah i think i think foreclosures are probably one of the areas where you can go find a you know a, a deal and then maybe some you know your typical like wholesaler type strategies so maybe you know dusting off the uh the, the, the playbook on 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 that you know homes that are distressed or have a lot of work or you were some financial or you know divorce or, or some some issue right I, I think those are probably good sources but you know i don't i don't i don't see like just wholesale like um sellers you know jumping ship i mean compared to 10 15 years ago the banks got better with vetting people and requiring down payments and equity so there's there's just not a lot of people with with bad credit scores that are upside down that would like walk away from their home. So I think if you, if you target those, those pent up uh, foreclosures, you know, you're, you're probably seeing, you said it was up 219%. You're probably seeing like two or three years of foreclosures, you're, like all being shoved into one year now because of the moratorium. So I think, I think that's a great place to, to go look for deals. And, and it sounds like you've really found a way, which is cool to, uh, make it a win-win for everyone. Like it's a win for you. You're helping this homeowner out that's in financial distress. That's a win for them. And then the end buyer, you know, has is going to have a great product to uh, to live in or or to rent if it's a renter. So it's you know, I, I really like that strategy. And you know, you're you're serving a lot of people, which is cool. That's what it's all about. So um, let's wrap up, Dan, and talk about this hyper fast, hyper local strategy that you created uh you got a best-selling book on it and um i believe that you also um coach and train uh, real estate agents on how to do that so talk to us about hyper local hyper fast yeah so my first year in real estate business i went out sold over 22 million of volume and uh, that became my main source of income and then along the way i would pick up one or two investment properties or, or, or deals, but it was all, all because I really had a narrow uh, marketing strategy. I, I defined a, a niche and that those were the people that I marketed to. That was where I went to try to get my, my deals, my listings, my buyer clients. And then I've, I've applied the same strategy to investing. So I've, you know, over the years, it's kind of rotated depending on where I think the market is going, but it started off with single family homes, then condo redevelopments. So I think a lot of times in as a real estate agent or a real estate investor, people can you know, try to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And they, they try to dabble, right? But I think the better thing to do is to like master one vertical or one niche 
and then try to build systems around that and then move on or expand to another one once you've got that down. So people have this attention span issue and they try to go too wide, too fast, instead of becoming an expert on you know, one or two areas and techniques. So that, that strategy really helped us grow our real estate team and then our investing and development team. And then later on, after I wrote the book, we started to do coaching for real estate agents uh, all across, um, you know, the, the world. We've coached people internationally. So you can you can go to hyperfastagent.com to learn about our coaching for real estate agents. Uh, we we haven't really decided, we haven't done that for real estate investors yet, but uh, we do do a monthly investor meetup and, um, you know, sometimes we stream that online as well. So we, we offer some free meetups and tools and networking events for investors as well. All right, so I want to repeat these uh, websites first for real estate agents. And uh, for real estate agents, it's www.hyperfastagent.com, hyper, H-Y-P-E-R, fastagent.com. And again, uh, take a moment and recap what's the advantages of um, a real estate agent learning that strategy, that process, that system? The, it, well, the advantage I think is it, you know, the, and the way we coach is to take it, take, you know, define, define your market, define your one or two pillars of lead generation, master that, get enough business so that you cannot, you know, possibly serve it all. And then you can focus on scaling your team, like hiring administrative help, hiring, uh, you know, agents at some point to help. So it's it's all about, you know, mastering one vertical, one niche, and then building systems around that and expanding to more. And, you know, we want to, through that process and through, uh, you know, investing and, and other things we do, we want to help teach people how to scale uh, their, their business, how to scale their income and get out of the trap of trading time for money. And I think, you know, as a investor, that that's what you do. And, you know, we're, we're doing that through real estate sales and through investing. And then Dan, you also mentioned um, meetup and resources for real estate investors um, where you've got content for them. And that was a meetup. Uh, share that uh, again. Yeah, so we do a monthly or um, sometimes every other month meetup that we do in Arlington, uh, Virginia. Uh, we do stream that online or, or have in the past. Um, so that meetup, you can go to meetup.com uh, and then I forget the exact URL, but it's it's grid. It's called Grid Arlington. G R I D. Arlington, and that is on uh, meetup.com. And, you know, you can also follow me on Instagram or Facebook and connect with me there for, uh, you know, real estate tips, real estate content. Yes. Yeah, so uh, following Dan uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, facebook.com forward slash the Dan Lesniak, spelled D A N, the Dan Lesniak, L E S N I A K. And same for Instagram.com forward slash the Dan Lesniak, L E S N I A K. Dan, thank you so much for taking time out to be with us today. It's been a, a joy and a blessing to have you on, brother. Thank you, Jay. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Look forward to staying in touch and talk to you soon. All right. Take care. All right. There you have it, my friend. Another episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. Wishing you all the best. I need your help. Think of just one person in your network that would benefit from this episode and share it with them. Um, and on iTunes, in the upper right-hand corner, those three little dots, click on those and just hit follow so you don't miss out on any more of these amazing episodes of raising private money. Here's to taking your business to the next level, and I'll see you right here on the next Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? 
then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.